Good evening, church. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Colin, the pulpit minister here at Central Church of Christ. And this is Dan Spaeth. He's one of our elders. And here at Central Church of Christ, it's our mission to be God's heart and hands in this community and beyond. If you'd like to learn more about what that means, I want to encourage you to head over to our website at www.churchvictoria.com. This is our Wednesday evening conversation through the law and the prophets where we open up the Old Testament, we move through the narrative and the text, and we see how it impacts us today as the church and how it how that text connects to Jesus. Um, if you're listening to this on the Heart and Heads podcast, I want to thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you have the bell turned on so you get notified every time we upload a video. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure to like and share. That really helps us out. And make sure to comment down below. Um, if this ministry has blessed you or you'd like to partner with us in this ministry, I want, I want to encourage you to head over to that website. At the top of the page, we have a donate button that uh, take, will take you to PayPal, and you can partner with us as we seek to teach and preach the gospel. Uh, we're going to pray and get into the lesson. Again, church, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, we're ready to go. <clears throat> yep. It's going to be a good one. Yep. I think so. Let's pray. We'll get started. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the opportunity we have to be together again tonight. We pray your blessings upon us as we study. We pray your blessings upon our audience that those who will watch and we pray that they'll be uh, uh, impacted in a positive way, that they'll uh, that they'll learn and grow and that they'll uh, they'll draw it'll draw them closer to you. Father, bless us as we as we go through our lives. So many things going on right now. It's a great time of year. Uh, it's a holiday season and and uh, just uh, uh Point everything about this season points us to you, and I thank you for that. Just bless us, Father, as we move forward. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're gonna be we're gonna be moving pretty quick here. We're gonna be moving through quite a few scriptures. So we're gonna be in. Uh, I mean, we're coming out of Leviticus 16, and and so we know right that everything in the Old Testament is a shadow, and it's really just it's really just pointing forwards towards mm -hmm. Christ, right? Mm -hmm. It's all it all works together to point towards Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know that, right? So one of the things about Leviticus 16 is it's the Day of Atonement. It's how we enter back into the presence of God. And it's, it's a really big deal. But it's not just individually how we enter in. It's how the community mm -hmm. also enters in. So both aspects are true. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at... And I think we need to make clear, this was, a, this was all physical. Okay? Mm. For the most part... Everything we're reading about is physical. The sacrifice. Adam, system. I mean, uh, Aaron, you do this. Moses, you do this. Guys, you do this. You put on these clothes. You do this. You you offer this. You offer that. It's all it's all physical. Right. But God is going to point us to a spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's what He's doing here. He's pointing us spiritually. You know, that's what He was doing with Abraham. That's what He's doing. That's what He's doing with Adam and Eve. Pointing us to a spiritual connection to Him. Right. Uh, you know, the, the physical is only going to last. The only thing the physical is about is bringing us to the spiritual. That's right. all it's doing. And and so here, you know, the the thing that gets me here that that I never saw before is, is that he had to take incense into the most holy place to cover the atonement cover. So he, it basically hiding him hiding. because he still got sin. He still he still sin can't deal with God. And, you know, the, the wonderment about the spiritual is I don't have that problem anymore. Right. I don't have that problem because Hebrews chapter 10 tells me. That I can go before, go into the holy place, the holy place where where only the high priest could go. I can go in there with boldness and confidence. I don't have any right to be there. Yeah, Hebrews ten, Hebrews four. Yeah, and it gets, but it gets better than that, and that's what we're going to look at, right? But, I, but I don't, we don't have any right to be there. No, no, we have no, no right. No, we don't. But we have every, we we belong there, but we no. don't have any right to be there. Right. God gives us the right. God makes it so I can be there. Yeah, we didn't earn that right. No, we can't do anything can't to get that right. right. Nothing. Yeah. We can't do anything. So everything, all the work that was needed to be done was done by God Absolutely. doing it for us so that we could have a relationship and access to him in a spiritual sense. And, yeah. and I don't think many people understand that, especially when you're reading Leviticus, it, get, it gets so boggy in all the, all the detail. Not only can we now, I mean, think, think about it for a second. The only person who was allowed to enter into the presence of God was the high priest. He had to be a descendant of Aaron. Mm -hmm. It had to be once a year had to do all of these offerings first. This is the only person who is allowed to walk in to that presence, into God's throne room, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, people who aren't even descended from Levi, from Aaron, all people who call on the name of the Lord are now allowed, because of Christ, to enter in to the throne room. And it gets even better than that. It's not enough. God doesn't just want to, just doesn't want to be, this is how much God loves you. God doesn't just want to be in your presence 
when you come into his throne room. That's not enough for him. Mm -hmm. He wants more. And that's what the new covenant is all about. So let's go look at that, right? Because this is all about him being one with us. That's yeah. what he wants. He yeah. wants to be one with his people. It's what he's always wanted. Always wanted. Always. always. You know, it's you know what's really funny is I was I was listening to a guy the other day and he pointed this out. He said, you know, in Matthew, where he says there are going to be some on the right and some on the left, right? You on the right, you did all these things. You on the left, you didn't, right? Separating the sheep and the goats. Was, mm -hmm. I think Matthew twenty three. Um, notice what he says there to the to the goats. You're going to the judgment. You're going to destruction. The place that was prepared for them, no. Mm -hmm. The place that was prepared for the for Satan and his demons. So it's not a place prepared for you. No. It's not meant for you. No. Is that that place of punishment? Isn't is it? No. That's not where God wants to send you. No. That's a place prepared for the spiritual mm -hmm. rebels yeah. who knew God fully and who were fully known by Him and said, you know what? I don't care anyway. That's what that place is prepared for. Those spiritual powers and authorities that send. We have a choice. Yeah. We have a choice. We don't have to go that way. No. We have to go that way. If we give ourselves up, we have to go that way. But so let's, that's, that's my point. What is the point? That God wants to be one with his people. That God has done everything necessary to bring that in. And he promises it. Let's look at Ezekiel 36. Now, Ezekiel 36, just to give it the backdrop of this prophet a little bit, Ezekiel is, is prophesying after Babylon has come in and raided Judah. Yeah. Right? So the, Judah was the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom's already gone. The northern kingdom, right. Israel split. They mm. came into the land. We're, we're getting there where they're going to get ready. We're getting ready in our study to talk about them coming into the land, right? But they've been there a long time once, At this, this, point, once this happened. Yeah, they've been there a long time. The kingdom split. You had a northern kingdom of Israel, southern kingdom of Judah. And Ezekiel has been taken captive from Judah. He's a priest. He's been taken captive from Judah and he's been whisked away. And as they are being taken into exile, God is prophesying through him. All right? So that's the backdrop of Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Now, this promise, this prophecy comes during that time so this is god for i will take you out of the nation we're in verse 24 yes sorry ezekiel 36 verse, verse 24. 24 for i will take you out of the nations i will gather you from all countries and bring you back into your own land i will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean i will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols right a major problem with these with the kingdom of judah and the kingdom of israel was idolatry it was a constant problem, mm -hmm. right? And we're going to read about it. We've already seen it in Exodus 32. Yeah, with a golden calf. <laughs> with a golden calf. Mm -hmm. So we've already seen how this is this is a problem. Because they've lived in amongst a people that worship that away. We can get the same problem when we live amongst a people that worship mm -hmm. different than what God says. You can control an idol. Yeah. You can't control that yeah. cloud on that mountain, right? right? All right. right. Verse 26. I will give you a new heart. And put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. I will save you from all your uncleanliness. This is talking about a new thing. The old covenant's been broken. It's been destroyed. We know that. The temple has been destroyed. The symbol of the covenant, that's all gone. Their country is no more. God is saying, hey, I'm going to do, I am doing something new. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to abandon you. I want my presence to dwell in you. That's what the Day of Atonement is pointing towards. And look at what he says here. When that new thing comes, I'm going to put my spirit in you. And I think you need to, we need to clarify. He's, he's prophesying to people who are in chains mm -hmm. as they're walking down a road going away from their home. That's right. Yeah. And he's talking to them about restorations coming. Yeah. There's hope here. Oh, yeah. And, but here he's talking about a time way, way farther down the road. Oh, than them. Yes. But Because they will get to go home. Yes. They will get to be rebuild because he talks about the, the city is going to be rebuilt. The fields are going to be replanted. Everything's going to. And, and he said, I'm going to bless it all. But here he's talking about another time. He's talking about farther down the road. Farther down the road. They may not have understood that. And so let's be really clear, right? Peter mm -hmm. says that 
The angels long to look into this mm -hmm. mystery. Paul constantly refers to the gospel and Christ as a mystery. Yeah. So what we shouldn't do is we shouldn't read this and go, well, they understood all the nuts and bolts. They really didn't. No, they didn't. They really didn't. No. They had no idea. No. I mean, this would have been to a Hebrew chained up at the back of a Babylonian slave column, right, heading into Babylon. This message would have been would have been confusing as all get out. What do you mean? Well, God's spirit's going to be. He tells him in this chapter what they've done yeah said you've done this these this 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 and this you, mm -hmm. you've done this he said but i'm gonna i'm gonna forgive that right and i'm gonna bring you back and i'm gonna rebuild your cities and it's gonna be better than ever and he said and everybody will know that i did it that's right that you didn't do it i did it that's right everybody will know and uh and you know when you look at this and you see that this is all coming and you said well go the covenant's been broken that's what's happened that it's been broken okay they broke the covenant with with god that's right. And God said, I'm going to make a new covenant. Well, if you look at Jeremiah 31, if you go to there and look at what he says there, he said, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. Now, this is Jeremiah writing to the same group of people. Well, Jeremiah, all, Jeremiah is writing to the people that are that are left behind at Judah. Yeah. That are yeah. right before the uh, <laughs> right before the exile and then those left behind. <laughs> That's right. You go ahead and read it. All right. So 31, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time. <laughs> I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. Now, when you read that, I'll put my, put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. Ezekiel 36 is expanding on that. Yes. That's, that's <laughs> Ezekiel 36 yep. is in this realm, okay? where God is going to move them himself mm -hmm. to follow his laws and decrees. That's what this is, yeah. right? So I will put my laws in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, no, know the Lord. So why is that? So under this, <laughs> under this old covenant, this covenant at Sinai that we're really just, we're really getting into, right? Under that covenant, you would take a baby eight days old and circumcise them. And then they would become part, excuse me, they would become part of the group, part of the wider group. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you have to do with that baby? As that ba baby grows, you have to teach them. You have to teach them what it means to, to know God and, and who God is and what their covenant responsibilities well, are and everything else. I think there's, there's a good point here in Jeremiah. If you go back to chapter 29, he sends a letter to the exiles. Don't you think they're the people that are in bondage that have been taken because because the only thing Nebuchadnezzar took was he he took all the all the valuable stuff and took all the all the good people. Well, so all the yeah, there were prominent people. There were three different exiles. Yeah, there were three different times that Babylon came in mm -hmm. and took people away. Yeah, yeah. So. But what they left was the was the homeless and the discouraged and the yeah. and the the handicapped. That's what he left. Right. He didn't take them. He took all of the all the strong young men and the, the cream and of the crop. prominent the cream of the crop. Well, he sends a letter to the exiles and and he's telling them in chapter 20 29 uh god says i got plans for you now they're in bondage and yeah. jeremiah is talking to them from jerusalem from, right from back and they're and he said he said i have plans for you because there are plans to prosper you and not to not to harm you wait a minute wait just a minute you know this looks like i'm really hurting here right but if you read ezekiel with it while they're ezekiel's already been prophesying said hey guys you did it to yourself you did this god's telling you you did this so they've got two prophets at the same time working really, together working yeah. together one's from jerusalem one's there in babylon and, and let's take a step back what is the message they're communicating right the message they're communicating is despite your rebellion mm -hmm. despite your wickedness yes despite all of the horrible things that you do despite all of that I love you deeply. Yes. And I'm 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 going to despite all of the bad things, I'm going to save you. Yeah. That's been my purpose. That's always been my purpose. Now let's throw this into the context of today. Okay. Sun dies. Do what? Sun dies. Explain. You have a son and he mm -hmm. dies. Okay. What's the go to response? Why'd you do this to me? Bingo. Mm-hmm. We have a skewed perspective. 
God is working towards our life. Mm -hmm. God is working towards our deliverance. God is working for us mm -hmm. all the time. The enemy, sin, death, want to kill us and destroy us. Yeah. And we constantly take these horrible things that happen in this fallen world and we blame God. Mm -hmm. It's not his fault. This is a fallen world. He is doing everything he can to bring us back to him. He is doing everything we can to bring guys, him life. Guys, pay attention to this. This is important. He, this is God's motive. Mm -hmm. This is what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. He wants to save us. That's right. When I see something horrible happen, when I when I when I go through something horrific, or when I see somebody go through something horrific, when I, my response immediately is, "This is why I hate sin. This is why I hate the enemy. This is why I hate death." And God, you are so good because you are saving us from these things. Yeah, it's not His fault. No, we don't need to be blaming but Him. That's not where that's not where we go. But, but it is where we go. It is, we, we immediately, and the world around us does it. The world around us, we totally forget that there's an enemy, that there's sin, that there's death, that there's all these spiritual, evil spiritual powers that are causing this, yeah. that are destroying this, <laughs> that are destroying us. And they look at God and they go, look, 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 watch. We're going to kill that kid. We're going to kill that kid. Watch what they do. They're going to blame you. <laughs> yeah. And they kill that kid. And then everyone gets mad at him. Yeah. And God's sitting there going, I'm trying to save you. Yeah. I'm trying to save you. And we and we follow the spiritual powers and authorities like they're the Pied Piper. Yep. Yeah. And we follow him right off a cliff. And what he's doing in, in Leviticus 16 is 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 pouring the groundwork mm -hmm. for all of this. Because, right. you know, I think we we got a, a, a text keyed up in, in first Peter. Yep. Uh you know that that uh, it's in chapter two of First Peter, and it says, uh, uh, "As you come to Him, the living stone rejected by Him." Now He's talking about Jesus. That's right. Everything here, everything that we're talking about in in uh, uh, in is Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Jesus said, "My blood is going to be shed, and it's the blood of the new covenant." There's yep. going to be a new covenant. But remember, we told you guys that for this covenant. For this cleansing to work, something had to die. That's right. Always something died. And and God chose himself. Yes. Okay. And here he chooses himself to die. <laughs> it's the only thing that was good enough. And it says, it says, as you come to him, the living stone rejected by humans, but loved, but chosen by God the pre and precious to him. You also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house. So he's not building, he's not building a tabernacle anymore. He's not building a temple. Solomon's not building a wooden and stone and, and temple inlaid with gold. It's not what he's building. Yeah, yeah. He's building a spiritual house. Look, look at the language here, though. This is this is heavy. This is deep language of relationship at every level, right? So God says, I'm going to put my spirit in you. I, I, my spirit, who, who I am, the essence of what I am, is going to come and live in you. That's that's number one. Then not only is that not only am I going to come and live in you, but the entire community all together is going to be is going to be brick by brick a spiritual house for me to live in. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to live in you individually, each each little brick I'm going to permeate. Mm -hmm. But then when all of these bricks get together, it, that's where I want to live. And when and you be. look at, at Ezekiel 36, and you see what he says, I'm going to come in. I'm going to, I'm going to put my spirit in you. Mm -hmm. It makes Acts 2:38. Oh yeah. It makes sense. Oh, yeah. Because when he says, when they ask, what can we do? Because we killed God's son. What can we do? Yeah. And Peter tells them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you will receive, receive the, the gift, gift of the of Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. The fulfillment of Ezekiel 36 in each individual's life as they move forward, because because not baptism doesn't save them. Right. It's the blood that we that we come in contact with. Well, and, it's us, it's, and it's us believing. Mm -hmm. That God is going to do that. You know, this past this past Sunday, I mean, it's, it's probably multiple Sundays by the time this comes out. But, you know, this past Sunday, I got up there and I, I flicked that water. And I said, there ain't nothing special about I this water. I remember that, yeah. There's nothing special about this water. Mm -hmm. it's, what what it, What is actually happening here that I believe, that I have faith, that I have trust, that I have confidence? confidence. Mm -hmm. That's right. That when I go to God through this, not that this is anything. But that God is doing something. Mm -hmm. I have to know that. I have to understand that. I have to buy into that. And if I buy into that, then God is working. But if I don't have any, if I don't, if, if that's nothing, right? 
if I don't believe that that's anything, that has anything to do with it, right? And I just demand that God do everything the way I want. I mean, well, then we're in a, we're in a different ball game. Yeah. But this is faith. Faith is believing. Yeah. Faith is trust. Faith is confidence. Faith is assurance that God is working. That God is going to work. The water is just it's just water. Well, and and here, if now, let me read a little bit more of this. He says, "You also, all like living stones, are being built in a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood." That's right. That's what we talked about when we started this class this this evening. That you know, Hebrews chapter ten says, "I have every I can go in with confidence. I don't belong there. I don't belong in the holy place." But I have every right to be there because of what Jesus did. Well, and and who goes in the holy place? Priests. Priests. And that's what all of the us are. The high priest. And but he he opened the way. That that's what we talked about a couple weeks ago when when the when the curtain was split from top to bottom. That's right. He opened the way for us to go into the very throne room of God. And that's, that's what right. he says here. He's building us into a spiritual house. And somewhere I think it's in first first Corinthians says says we are the temple of the living God. That's right. He, he moves into us. That's what he was telling them in Ezekiel 36. Do you think they got it? No, they didn't. So they don't understand any of that. Let's, let's take a sidetrack real quick, but it's one that's near and dear to our hearts. You see people all the time say it. Well, I believe in Jesus, but I don't know about that church down there. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right? I believe in Jesus, and I, I, do, I do church at my home by myself. Oh, yeah. I've had that before. What I've are had... you talking about? I know. What are you talking about? Look, look, look. Well, it negates, it negates everything Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 on says. Well, but look, it's like it's like this. It's a picture of this for a second. It's like a brick. You got a whole bunch of bricks, and you got God the bricklayer, and he's laying all these bricks together. And these, these are people, right? And he's laying them all together. And that brick in that pile pipes up and looks at him and goes, you ain't putting me in that house? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> you Look, 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 look. This is a building. There's nothing special about this building. No. It's a physical building. There's, it's, it's, you know, you tear it down to build it back up, you, whatever you want to do. This, it's just a building. The people of the church. And if you refuse to have fellowship with the people, if you've decided that you're better than the people, if you've decided that those people aren't worth your time, whatever it is, you ain't in Christ. You ain't following him. You ain't doing the right thing. Because whether you like it or not, his blood, Christ shed his blood for those people. So you better get with the program. You better stop this foolishness and yep. you better come on back to the church. Because if you don't, if you die out there, you're in the far country and that's not a good place to be when you die. No. So you might might want to rethink. Look, I'm not saying that it has to be this place or that place or the other place. But the expectation for Christians is that they are part of the community, that they go along with the community, that they fellowship with the community. So you need to find a fellowship of believers that's doing that. Something I've been saying on, on a... Uh, on my class on Sunday morning from first Peter, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a how to manual for survival for mm. Christian survival. It's what it, mm. what it, is how I look at it. That's good. And that's it, good perspective. And it's a, uh, what do I have to do? What, what I, what I need to, how do I need to, how do I need to focus myself? And I said, you know, you, you can't, you can't do this alone. It is, it takes a community of believers. That's what he's telling us in chapter two and chapter three, chapter four. He tells us that, you know, that, that this is, and, and then he, then he, I told him last week, I said, all of these things he's saying, how important is the church to him? Well, he died for it. And then in chapter five, the beginning of chapter five, he puts a, a plurality of elders, a group of elders in it to oversee it, to protect the flock, to not to be managers, not to manage they're to they're to oversee the flock to make sure the flock is is gonna get over here to drink get over here to eat get over here stay away from this no no no, no go over there go, come back over here you know to make sure that they're that they're striving that they're, they're that they have every opportunity to grow and I and I took them to Ephesians chapter four where it says he say gave some to be some to be this some to be this. and one of it says he came saying gave some to be pastors yep. well that word in the in the Greek is the same exact word that he uses in first Peter chapter five. It's about a group of men. It's not a, we're not going to call you a pastor. You're not a pastor. No, 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 no. I'm good. You're, you're please, not. Please don't you're, give me that job. I don't want that job. You're, you're, a, <laughs> you're the minister here. That's right. You know, I'm a pastor, right? I'm an elder. I'm, I'm, you could call a bishop, you know, with a different role. My job with the other two guys is to, is to keep this flock. And that God did that in every flock 
to protect that flock. Or it was rather important. That's what that the letter Titus was written to. Yeah. I left you in Crete to finish what was done, to appoint elders in all the churches, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, that's that's the whole point. This is this is how churches work. This is yeah. how the group, the community lives and thrives and mm -hmm. everything else. We need shepherds. We need pastors. Mm -hmm. Not just one guy. And that's, unfortunately, that ends up being the model. Well, that's the way places. we do it in America. Right. You know, we that's where it's gotten to in America, where you look at one guy and he says, pastor this, pastor that. No, don't do not do that. You know. I, I am a one guy in a, in a group of two other with three it's, other guys. It's probably not a good idea to have one. I mean, just just from a technical standpoint, if you have one guy, there's no there's no community there. You know, we've got a group of men, and that's a good that's a good way to do it because mm -hmm. you've got different people who can see things from different perspectives, who can input, mm -hmm. who can pray for, who can who can be all about mm -hmm. it. And so that's it's. <coughs> I'm not you know it's it's probably just best practice to have the group rather than the one yeah i mean well you know it anyway we're getting off we're getting, getting off, off topic we're getting off topic here, a little. no i don't <laughs> think so because because everything that that he's doing here in leviticus everything he did in, in jeremiah 31 everything he did in ezekiel 36 is all pointing to down the road we're down we're the down the road well and once we're there how is god maintaining this relationship mm -hmm. and he does it through pastors he yep. does it through teachers he does it through a minute he does it through mm -hmm. these people in the church he did it through the apostles and he did it through the prophets That's what the text says you know he's doing it through all these to, things to, so they can mature to works of service right that's taking the flock and keeping it within the ditches so we can grow up and mature into christ you know keeping it between the ditches that's what he's that's what the the, the that's what these guys are here for is to mature the church so he can for works of service yep. and you know and that's what he's pointing to in leviticus 16 when he's talking to aaron when he's talking to the sons when he's talking to them you know god's perspective is down the road and we're the down the road jesus well, said that and even with the israelites so it's all we've said it's all a shadow right so let's let's come back to prior to new covenant right prior to the the promises of the new covenant in ezekiel let's go back to israel real quick what is god doing with them the same thing yeah he wants them to be a light yeah. to the gentile world mm -hmm. he wants them to be that hey this is God. This is the real God, not the not the false gods you're following, not the spiritual powers and authorities that you've elevated to gods. This is the true God. This is the creator. You need to listen to him. Yeah. Right? That's what they were supposed to do then. And then and then when Paul comes on the scene and in Acts chapter 25, 26, 27, or in that, you know, he gets beat up, goes to trial before the Sanhedrin, goes to trial before Felix, the governor, he goes to trial before Festus, and he goes before and he stands before Agrippa. You know, and you know what the problem was? All the Jews in that area wanted to kill him. Yeah. Because he's teaching something different than what they believe. What? And he's teaching the truth. That's right. He's teaching the things that we've been telling you guys. You know, that's what he and Peter and John and all them were teaching. And they wanted to kill him. Yep. Because they didn't want. And so these guys in Ezekiel 36, they don't get, they don't got a clue. They don't got a clue what's coming. It's, it's, it's really rather unfathomable. I mean, if, and if you want to see the shock, if you want to see the shock of it, Go to go to Acts chapter nine and ten, mm -hmm. and watch Peter, and watch Cornelius, and watch that whole thing come down because yeah. that's it. That's where they really figured out where Peter's going. I got it. Yeah, I finally got it. I've been following Jesus for three years. I got to talk with the man. Didn't understand any of it. Now I get it. They should have known, Cole. Uh, Abraham was told when I'm going to bless you and through your seed what all uh, nations, not just the Jewish nation. All nations are going to be bright. Right. Well, and I would say that, you know, there was, it's, some of them did. Some of them did. Some of them, some of them understood some of it, right? So you have Jesus with the law, right? And he, and that he has that lawyer and that lawyer comes to him and pushes on him. And he says, what's the foundation of the law? Mm -hmm. What's the most important commands? And Jesus mm -hmm. says, love Lord your God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is what the entire law is built off of. Right. And the, and the lawyer goes, yep, that's right. In one of the Gospels, it's the lawyer. In Luke, in Luke's Gospel, it's not Jesus who says it. Jesus turns the question back around on him, and he and the lawyer says, "Love God and love your neighbor." Some of them got it. Some of them did understand that there was more to it. That's what a lot of those first-century debates among Judaism was. For example, you had one rabbi, and this is just an example, but you had one rabbi who said, "You can divorce your wife for any reason. You should give her a certificate of divorce and walk away." And you had another rabbi who was like, "Uh, uh." -uh. No, sir. Yeah. It's only for sexual immorality. Mm. Only if the covenant is broken, then can you set aside your wife with a certificate. And you still have to give her the certificate of divorce. The certificate of divorce was to protect her. Mm -hmm. So there was tension within the Jewish realm. 
You know, look at Nicodemus. You know, look, he was looking yep. and he was honestly seeking. Look at Joseph of Arimathea. Look at uh, the, uh, si was it Simon was his name? The, the priest in the temple when they brought Jesus to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. was his name Simon was, I can't, I can't recall off the top of my head, but he was looking. He was looking forward to the redemption of Israel, to the Messiah, to the coming of the Messiah. Some of them did get it. Mm -hmm. Some of them, maybe they didn't understand fully the plan, but they think, did get it. I think that's why it's so important. They understand, we understand how significant it is what we have been offered to us. Yeah. The, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, then on the third day he comes out of the tomb and makes it possible for us to have a relationship with the Father. This is, it, this is what the whole law is pointing to. And we get to live it. We get to live it. And sad how many people I see out there that have decided being a disciple is not what they want to do. Being a disciple is not enough. Yeah. You know, God's very, Jesus is very specific about what a disciple looks like, what they're going to sound like, what they're going to be doing. Yeah. And and it it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out if you are one or not. No. You're not going to convince him you are one it takes when some, you aren't. Take some honesty. Here's and here's the thing. This is and this is what's so frustrating uh, about it to me is we want to retreat into this this world of well, it wasn't my choice. Right? It's not my fault. It's it's not my choice. And that's such utter nonsense. It is 100% your choice. Yep. You have a choice. You have a choice to make. You can decide. You can decide to stand with God. Mm -hmm. Or you can decide to stand on your own. It's 100% your choice. And if it's today, if today is the day, make the choice. Make the choice to stand with God. Absolutely. Make, make that choice. Give us a call. Turn it around. Give us a call. You don't have to stay where you're yep. at. Turn it around. Yep. We'd love to have you come. We'd love to have you. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to. We'd love to help you through this process. I mean, that's what God wants. That's right. He wants to work with you. That doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. And I, and you know, look. And let's be frank. That's why some people fall away, because they're trying so dang hard to be on perfect. their own to do everything right. Mm -hmm. If you could do it right, we didn't. We need grace. That's not, that's not. God we do it right. We don't need Jesus. We don't need it. Yeah. Yep. We don't need him. Yeah. So it's not about, is it important to try to do what's right? Is it important to, to set your mind on that? That's absolutely right. But remember the righteous will live by faith. That's right. That's right. Let's pray, man. All right. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the opportunity. We've had to go through this again. We, I pray that our audience is, we've made it clear enough. We've made it simple enough that they can understand and, and they can process it. And Father, if they've got questions, I pray that they'll contact us, that they'll that they'll call, reach out to us and and let us know that that hey, I need I need I want to know more about this. Uh, Father, just bless our our audience, bless those that are listening, and bless those that are processing all of this information, and bless those that are that are going to share this information with other people. Uh, that that this this will be a message, Father, that that resonates uh, throughout uh, throughout the families and and uh, and people that these people know. Father, just bless us. Help us to be the very best we can be. Help us to take advantage of all that you've offered to us through the through the death, burial, and resurrection of your son. And we thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father, for what you've done. Bless us as we move forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.